what motivated me to become a barber. Uh, I used to own a record store, and okay. the record industry was kind of taking a dive. And my, I had a barber that cut me every week, and I was always super intrigued. He'd use a straight razor on me, and I was super intrigued by the way that he would use a straight razor on me. This guy, my barber uses the straight razor on me, you know? And I never, I had never seen it done. I, I was always the craftsmanship of a straight razor. I was always into collecting straight razors and whatnot. And Ray always used a straight razor on me. I was impressed by how he did that. Like the banter that goes on in a barber shop between the, the men and the kids. You know, it was just a crazy, a cra like a crazy energy that would go on in the barber shop. And I'd always ask him questions when he was cutting my hair, like, why do you do this? Why do you do that? And he was relentless about telling me that he thought I would be a good barber. And my record store was doing really well for the early years before the internet started becoming more. The internet started becoming more relative as far as like downloading music and whatnot. It was kind of hindering record sales. And I was like, I gotta fall, I gotta find something to fall back on. So I decided I literally woke up one day, and this is the short I woke up one day and I was like, man, I really want to be a barber, like a real barber. You know, the smell of the talcum powder in the barber shop, the Playboys laid out, the straight razor, the straight razor shaves. And Tuesday morning, I started at barber school. I called on Friday afternoon and asking like what I could do to like, what I could expedite. Do. I said, yeah, to make it happen. And he was like, come in, interview. And I went in and interviewed with him. And I started on Tuesday morning. And that was 11 years ago. Wow. Okay. I, I love it. I love. Uh, I love the gratification I get from the clients. I love the gratification I get from being able to execute something that. Sometimes you got guys that come in with hair that's so crazy, like, what the F am I going to do with this, you know? <laughs> and you do what you can, and if it works out, it works out. And most of the time, it works out. Okay, it's just okay. like, it's, it's the amount of people you need, how social the job is. At times, it's taxing. It can be taxing. I mean, you cut 15 heads a day, and you have an hour-long conversation, or a minute conversation, whatever it may be. It can become a little bit taxing, but it's always fun. Okay, okay. As far as style goes, like, at this point in my career, I can kind of cut whatever they want. Lately, it's been a lot of like a lot of like classic haircuts, more traditional style haircuts. Uh, you know, comb overs, pompadours, slick back haircuts, faded on the sides. But um, I, I started barber college in an all black neighborhood in San Francisco. Okay. Point. So I only knew how to cut hair and I taught myself how to cut straight hair. Okay. Asian hair, white hair, Caucasian hair. And uh, evolution has kind of brought me to a point in my career where I can do either. I can do short haircuts on coarse hair, I can do long haircuts on straight hair, I can do short haircuts on straight hair, I can do long haircuts on coarse hair. And it's kind of inevitably evolved. And now I have clients that come to me for everything. to treat my client exactly the way that I would like to be treated verbatim. From the consultation to the drink, we offer them the drink and the haircut. Um, and then the smile, you know, they look in the mirror like, yes. Or like a new client. A new client comes in, has a full head of hair, gets, gets all doctored up and looks in the mirror and has never been cut by me. That smile and that the end result is what yeah, it's the most significant gratification for me. It's so relative. And it's it's like there's nothing that beats that feeling. Okay, okay. You know, look, look at yourself, you know what I mean? Okay. Like, you don't have to look a total wreck all the time. You can <laughs> get a haircut, yeah. you know what I mean? It's pretty cool. Being able to travel internationally to cut hair to me is the biggest achievement. Canada, Mexico, nationally, all over the United States, and now in the UK. Just for, just for figuring out that barbering is such a passion for me. It, I mean, it's so it's so pertinent to me as a person. And for, I think my biggest achievement is being able to travel internationally to cut hair, to be able to, to show other people like what 
I do in the, in the Bay Area. I couldn't be any more honored, any more grateful, or any more respectful of the trade than that. You know? like it's, it's crazy. I never would have thought it would happen. The UK is the cut in, the UK is the first, as far as, uh, as, far as Europe goes. Uh, Where else have you caught? Uh, internationally, Canada, Mexico. I've been to Mexico a lot. Uh, I go to Mexico a lot to teach. I okay. teach a lot. Um, and then I've been all over the Bay Area, and I'll be going to the East Coast. So there's a lot of stuff in the works, but as far as internationally, the UK, Mexico, and Canada. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive. Because <laughs> honestly, I was super worried about it. I was like, wait a second. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't been here since 2001, and I didn't even hear that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had asked the guys, like, well, what am I going to do about the murder for my Clippers? And everything's running perfect. I mean, I've done such haircuts, and it's perfect. I don't have any complaints at all. Okay, you know, okay. Like, my TL liners feel like they're running slower, but they're running perfect. It's just like a little quieter. Maybe it's come out of here or whatever, but everything's perfect. Everything's perfect. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> <laughs>